Now, I certainly understand that the larger wrestlers, the giants, the massive dudes, you know, don't exactly satisfy the average kind of hardcore modern wrestling fan. You, your hardcore modern wrestling fan is much more conditioned towards the high flying, the high spots, the tumbling acts, the, you know, super kicks and all. You know what I'm getting at, right? Like, it's very much a focus on the moves and the matches and not the moments, not the, you know, characters. It, that's, it's just not. Now, what happens is every once in a while when you find those great moments and those great stories and those great characters, they stand out so much more in today's wrestling because you get that so infrequently. So I understand that a lot of people would look at somebody like an Omas and say, he sucks, not my flavor, over it, typical Vince McMahon force job, blah, 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 blah. And look, I will grant you that I don't think he's a great talent at this point. I still think he's relatively green as goose shit. Um, you know, just because a dude is tall doesn't mean that they're a main eventer. You know, like, you go back to what some of you are going to say, well, he's Black Kali. Well, let's look at Great Kali. At least you could say with Kali, he was terrible. We all know that. But he was a giant of a man and also a bit of a folk hero in his home country of India, which, you know, is either right now the first or second most populous nation in the entire world. So, for the WWE looking at it and saying, we put a world championship on him, this is going to mean buku business in India, which is not exactly true, but understandable nonetheless. If you're trying to grow your international brand, you're trying to grow your presence, you know, you could see Kali being an avenue towards that. Omas doesn't bring that to the table, obviously. But, Here's what I can say, is that we might not always like what a particular wrestling company does. We may not always agree with who they push or who they don't push. I've got people like that. You've got people like that. We're probably different in some respects and similar in some respects. But my whole thing is, is that if you are going to push a wrestler then fully buy into it and fully commit to it, whether I agree with it or not. If you have chosen to invest your time, effort, energy, and resources, money, all of that into a character, then you need to be all about getting it right with that character. And what really frustrates me with wrestling now especially with the the lack of real large guys, real giants, real massive dudes, is that when they get one, WWE, AEW, doesn't fucking matter, it seems like. They don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to booking these guys anymore and how they present these guys. And in particular, the spots that they put them in and the finishes they have to their damn matches. It didn't always used to be like this with wrestling. It used to be the exact opposite. If anything, wrestling didn't know how to book the cruiserweights and the high flyers. It knew how to book the steroids guys. It knew how to book the muscle-bound guys. It knew how to book the mammoth dudes, the giants, the really tall guys. It used to do that. Now the shit's flipped. And I say that to say... WWE, when it comes to Omas, if you're going to go there, then fucking go there. Don't be half-assing it. Don't be basically pulling a Bray Wyatt with your booking. And that's exactly what they've done with Omas. If you want fans to really care, whether that's really love or hate a character, you have to give them reasons to do so. 
And one of the ways you give them reasons to get invested in a character is that they can believe that this character is serious shit. Right? You watch Roman Reigns, you take his ass seriously. And when you look at how many victories he's had, they have booked him in a spot where he is taken seriously. And some of you are going to talk about, oh, look at how he's won these matches in a, as a world champion. It's still Roman. When you go into a big match with Roman, you think he's going to fucking win. You take it seriously. They didn't sit there and undercut him in every goddamn big match and big spot like they have done with Omos for some damn reason. Like, look, it was one thing if you were going to have him Lose at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar, even though he shouldn't have. If you were going to put him in that spot with Brock Lesnar, then he should have went over. Or more so, if he wasn't going to go over, then Brock Lesnar shouldn't go over either. Something went really haywire with the business over the years, where... They used to go out of their way to protect people to the point of sometimes doing it when they shouldn't. And now you're having Omas job out to Lesnar. I realize it's Lesnar and that doesn't feel like that bad, but it's still jobbing out at WrestleMania. That's not how you build a new star. But let's say it's Lesnar, it's Mania. It wasn't that prominently featured of a match on the card, on the show. You can get away with it. Okay, but then you go to Backlash at the very next pay-per-view and you kind of randomly throw together this match with him and Seth Rollins. And you're like, oh, okay, that fucking felt like it came out of nowhere. And you do the same shit again. This time, Seth Rollins helps lead him to a pretty damn good match. Omas did some actual good stuff in there. It was the best I've probably ever seen him in the ring. And you fucking job them out. You just don't do that. That's why it was hard for fans to get fully invested into Bray Wyatt, even going back to his very first iteration. At the time, he's doing some fun and cool shit in the fans' eyes. But when it came to the matches, he fucking was. When it came to the big match, he didn't get it done. And eventually, when you tried to course correct and you had him occasionally win a big match, it was too fucking late. You have got to take care of those that you are trying to get behind. If you were going to have him wrestle Seth Rollins and you want to make Seth Rollins look bad, then have a double count out. Then have a double DQ. You have Omos get DQ'd. Do something. Anything other than jobbing out to Seth Rollins. And I don't care how many times he had to hit the curb stomp. I don't care that he had to come off the top rope. You're going to say, well, that doesn't make Omos look bad. He's still fucking lost. Back-to-back -back pay per views for a giant. You don't do this shit. It's bad enough you used to job out Kane in the big show all the goddamn time. At least they had enough runs where you could sit there and say they were booked seriously. They were booked at the top. Omos doesn't have that behind him. Like, this is the type of dude, when you look at him, he does stand out. He's seven foot fucking three. He's got the type of presentation with MVP as his manager that suggests a main event type of spot. Because if you want fans to go more old school and say, this dude, I notice him when he fucking walks into the ring. And now you've got the main event type of mouthpiece manager and MVP backing him up. You know, hyping him up. Selling the story, selling the characters, selling the heat. That you need to protect and reinforce and support. And you don't do that by jobbing them out on all the goddamn pay-per-views. Omar should be the type of guy if you say, well, we don't want to put the world title on him yet. Understand. Doesn't have to be the champion in order to be a top guy, right? Doesn't have to be the champion in order for him to be viewed as a real credible threat. But what he does need to do is be put in a spot where he's booked against people that will help get the best out of him. And at the end of the day, 
He can go over them. And you can say, well, Brock Lesnar helped get a little bit out of him. Maybe. Seth Rollins, certainly. But he still lost to both of them. Something went really haywire and really sideways with fucking wrestling. We went from being able to book giants really, really well to now I can't book them worth a shit. Giants will go down too easily, get off their feet way too easily, sell way too much shit, and job way too fucking often. If you're going to book your 7 foot 3 guy like he's a 5 foot 10, 200 pound guy, then why do you have the 7 foot 3 guy? Look at that big tall motherfucker and say to yourself, you know what? We want to protect him. We're not having him do jobs. We're not having them do that bullshit. We're going to pound him down people's throats. Now you've seen this over the years from WWE. When they truly believe in somebody, whether it's Cena, an Orton, a Batista, a fucking Roman Reigns, it doesn't matter. If they want to, they will totally pound somebody down to your throat until you accept it. So I'm frankly floored and stunned if they thought, meaning Vince in this case, Thought enough of Omas to put him in that spot against Brock Lesnar, then clearly at least one guy sees something in him. And if he does, then why in the hell would you half-ass and play both sides of the fence here? Dive in and go all the fucking way. Omas needs to start winning and winning decisively and consistently. Otherwise, he's just going to end up another fucking Bray Wyatt.